Welcome to the lecture on computer vision. The goal of this session is to give you a broad overview of computer vision, that is machine learning applied to problems in relation to vision. Let's consider some definitions of what computer vision is. The both computer vision models learning and inference described it as follows. At an abstract level, the goal of computer vision problems is to use the observed image data to infer something about the world. This is also how the British Machine Vision Association and Society for Pattern Recognition displays it. So computer vision is seen as concerned with the automatic extraction, analysis and understanding of useful information from a single image or a sequence of images, so also videos. It involves the development of a theoretical and algorithmic basis to achieve automatic visual understanding. And what's really funny and surprising, if you look at the history of computing, and that happens quite a lot, is that computer vision in 1966 was believed to could be that it could be achieved as part of a summer project by attaching a camera to a computer and having it describe what it sees. Some years later, a lot of years later actually, we're still not there yet. There's still a lot to be explored, but there's also been a lot of really interesting and exciting advancement that can be attributed to computer vision. And to get you a feeling about how challenging and exciting the problem of understanding images is, I would like you to pause the video and really look at this image and try to think of ways where a computer might have problems understanding what's happening here and why. So please stop the video and think about it, sketch down some things that you think are important of and that make it challenging to understand what's happening in this image. And I'm going to tell you a bit of the notes from Andre Carpati, who was a PhD student at Stanford before he joined Tesla as their director of AI and autopilot vision. And he said, if we think like a machine and if we try to understand the image, then the first thing we recognize is that there's a bunch of people and we understand that they're in a hallway. And it's also easy to recognize that there are three mirrors in the scene uh, so that some of the people are just fake replica from different viewpoints. Each one of you will easily recognize President Obama from the few people pixels that actually make up his face. It helps that he's in a suit and that he's also surrounded by other people in a suit. You also recognize that there's a person standing on a scale, even though the scale occupies only very few white pixels that blend with the background. You recognize that Obama has his foot positioned slightly on top of the scale. And you know how physics work. So you know that the person measuring his weight is not aware weight is not uh, aware of Obama doing this. You also understand that people can be self-conscious about their weight, and that there are people in the background who find the person's confusing at his scale funny. And finally, because the person putting his foot on the scale is the president of the United States at the time, it's even funnier. So even in this very, very simple image, there's a lot going on, there's a lot of understanding, and computers are not even halfway there yet to understand the things that I just described. Nevertheless, there has been some really exciting progress on things like object detection. So here's a very nice animation from Google, and it's animating a neural network that is taking an image as an input and detects whether this is a cat or a dog. It's special because there has been a famous, there is a famous computer vision paper um, about how hard it is to detect cats and dogs. And what we're showing here is that it's comparatively easy with the current methods. So let's consider the problem again. What's really, really challenging about computer vision is that we're living in a 3D world but that our cameras only ever 
capture a 2D representation of that 3D world. Overall, computer vision is a very interdisciplinary field. You have people working on machine learning, you have people working on the cognitive sciences, psychology, people working on biology and neuroscience, but also physics as in optics or engineering as in robotics. And not sure how aware you are of this, but you know what we see in an image and what the computer sees is fundamentally different. Here's what the computer sees. We have the X, the Y, and the different color channels. What makes images special? They have a height and they have a width, but they also have a depth, right? And this comes from the 3D nature of reality. And it's quite a lot of data, actually. So if we have an HD image um, and we have three colors, that's more than 6 million input variables already. There's a variety of challenges also with the objects that are depicted. There can be variations due to the viewpoint. This is the same statue, but just photographed from different viewpoints. We have different illumination conditions. So light changes our perception. It changes what we see. It adds shadows and allows us to see detail. There's also variations in scale, different instances of a particular class, for instance, of notebook or human being can vary in size greatly. There's also the problem of occlusion. If one object is in front of the other, then you may not see the full object. Yeah, one object hides the other, occludes it. There's the issue of deformation, especially living beings can change their shape um, very, very quickly and very, very broadly, like this cat very nicely demonstrates. Then there's a lot of variation within different classes. Here are six different chairs that all look very, very different, but we all recognize them as chairs, and we all know that we can sit on these kind of things. Then there can be background clutter. For instance, here we have a cat sitting on uh, a sofa with similar texture. Other problems that arise in computer vision is the problem of translation, right? So just look at these different images. It's all the same image, but it's just moved a bit to the left, to the right, to the top, to the bottom. And if you now consider back what the computer sees, it's just a bunch of pixels, and all the pixels basically change their position. So in terms of pixel values, all these images are very, very dissimilar from each other. So that's a huge challenge, and it means that we need to get invariant to the location, right? We want to recognize the dog in all of these images. We want to recognize the TV and the parrot in all of these images. So we need to be, to some extent, invariant to the exact location of uh, an object. Scale is another problem, right? Depending on you zooming in and out, the image and the pixel values change dramatically. But for us as humans, our perception is not changed at all, right? So you need to take the scale into account and you also need to become invariant towards the scale. Rotation is another problem, right? It's still the same object, but the camera was just rotated to some extent. So let's consider some computer vision application. One famous example is the recognition of faces. And as you can see, this has been active research for quite some time, and it's more or less solved. Many, many phones, many, many cameras can automatically detect faces quite well nowadays. Segmentation is another problem. Here we have the normalized cut by Xi and Malik. And the idea here is to segment the image. The scale invariant feature transforms are an important breakthrough as well. And here the goal is to match different objects to each other based on certain features. Object recognition is an important computer vision application. Here the goal is to detect whether something is a train, an airplane or a person. And this started out quite small with just 20 object categories, 
but it's scaled to thousands and millions nowadays. And it works surprisingly well. As we can see here, one of the famous papers that advanced the state of the art in object classification um, by uh, Krzyzewski, Sutskiva, and Hinton showed like how well we nowadays can distinguish objects from thousands of different objects. Detection is an even more complicated problem for classification. We just want to see whether there is a dog or a cherry in the image. And here we want to really show where the dog is, put a bounding box around the dog and say, okay, this is the dog. These pixels belong to the dog. These pixels belong to the cat. Segmentation is another problem where we want to separate different parts of the image and show which object they belong to. And here's a very nice video from a self-driving car that uh, shows you how this segmentation and how this object recognition works in practice. You can see the cars are recognized as cars. We have the sidewalk, we have the people, and we have the trees and the buildings. Image captioning is another interesting machine learning application. The goal here is to take an image and to automatically describe it in text. So you take the image and then you get a description like the one on the top left, where it says a white teddy bear sitting in the grass or a man riding a wave on top of a surfboard. Scene graphs are another important application here. This is going far beyond just recognizing the person. The goal here is really to recognize all kinds of objects and how they relate to each other, which person they belong to, what instance they belong to. Object tracking is another important application of machine learning. Here, the goal is to follow an object in a video, and you can see here different tracking algorithms in different colors. And you can see how well they perform or when and why they fail. And it's a challenging problem, especially for small objects, as you can see here. But these approaches can also be used to generate art. You might have seen this neural style transfer or the deep dream. These are good keywords. If you want to Google, just look at it. It's ways of using neural networks, computer vision techniques for creative purposes. For instance, here on the right, we have one picture of a city tubing and different ways of making it look like it was painted by Van Gogh or by other painters. Um, there are many, many good classes on computer vision that you could be taking both online and at different universities. But I just wanted to give you a quick overview.